Hello everybody and welcome to Minecraft Hour of Code. This is a new game that has been released online, it is free to play and it's been made by Code Studio and Mojang. It's a game that's intended to teach young people how to do some basic programming and I thought that we would play it through. Now I am not a programmer and this is actually quite similar to a game that I played recently called Human Resource Machine. However, it's nowhere near as challenging as that game, but I thought it'd be fun to play together. So we're going to select Steve, and there are 14 puzzles in total to do. So you can see this one says, add a second move forward command to reach the sheep. So the way that we um, do these puzzles is just by thinking logically about what we're telling Steve over here to do. So when run, which is when we click this button, he's going to move forward. We need him to move forward again in order to work to the sheep. And that's what it says down here. That's our objective to reach the sheep. So we run, he walks forward, we've reached the sheep, and we've done the first puzzle. Now that was extremely simple, um, but what you can do here is you can see what it would look like if it was coded. So if you're interested in programming games or anything like that, this can be sort of like your basic steps towards doing something like that. So here it says wood is a very important resource. Many things are made from it. Walk to the tree and use the destroy block command to chop it down. So we've been given a new command now, and um, we've got to reach the tree first of all. So when we run, we need to move forward once, then twice, then destroy the block, and that's us done. Now you can also click over here and see what that would look like in JavaScript. So this is actually JavaScript code right here, and it gets pretty fascinating when your commands get more complex. Uh, but these you know, beginning ones, like the first seven, are like really easy. In fact, most of them are pretty easy, but I thought it would be fun for us to, to like play this together and uh, and go through it all. So here you can see puzzle number three, sheep shearing time. Use the shear command to gather wool from both the sheep. So we've got to get both of them this time. So we need to move forward twice. We can see that's pretty straightforward. Then we use the shear command to shear them. We turn to our right. We move forward again and we shear again. And once again, I want to see what that looks like in code. Pretty simple at the moment, isn't it? So anyway, we'll run this. You see we shear one sheep, then we go down and we shear the other one. Simple, simple stuff, and we've done it. So yay, on to the next level. Uh, puzzle number four now. We need to build a house before the sun goes down. Houses require a lot of wood. Cut down all three trees. Okay, so we can choose to cut these in whatever order we want to but if we look here it's probably going to be quickest to go like this also some of it's already been um, programmed here for us so he's going to turn to the left after he's destroyed that wood move forward once so we need to move forward two more times one and two destroy the block turn to our left move forward and then we'd be standing there and move forward two more times and then destroy the block. Now there is a lot of commands there. Let's go have a look at the code. It's basically just quite simple one thing after the other there, isn't it? Alright, so let's run this. Should all be good. I don't think we've made any mistakes here. There we go. Turn to the left. Move forward. Destroy the block. Awesome. We've done it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, so the next one. Puzzle number five. Every house starts with a wall. Build the first part of your house by putting the place and move forward commands inside the repeat loop. So this is where things get really fun. I like this a lot. We now have a, uh, a repeat loop here so we can tell the game to do things multiple times. So when we run we're going to do a repeat command four times. So we're going to place a block then move forward. So we can place birch blanks or if we really want to any of these materials let's select some wall and then we're going to move forward and that's all we need to do we need to do that four times and here's what it looks like in code so now those simple commands that we saw before are inside this bracket here and that one that much I understand as for this bit right here I'm not really sure <laughs> how exactly that works but obviously the code is saying um, repeat this four times over so we go through them one by one and we place down all of the wall and we've done it simple as that <laughs> There we go. I do like using the repeat one, and that's going to get more complicated as we progress. So what one are we going to choose? Obviously, we're going to go for the hard one, <laughs> because it's been quite easy so far. So build the rest of your house from any material you'd like. The repeat command will come in handy. I do believe it will. So let's look at what's going on so far. It's going to do this twice. It's going to move forward, place a block, move forward, and then place a block. It will then turn to the left, 
move forward again, place a block, then turn to the right. So now we need to do something twice, which is move forward, followed by placing a block. Uh, we can also destroy a block if that's what we want to do. I think we should make this a multicolored house. So let's just choose different materials each time. <laughs> And uh, it won't look too pretty, I know. Right, so once we've done that, we're going to be standing here, which means we need to turn to the right. And we've already placed the block there, so the next thing we need to do is just going to be repeated three times, which is to move forward and then place the block. So we'll move there, place a block, move there, place a block, move there, and place a block. Yeah, that's correct. All right, then we need to move forward one more time, turn to our right and then do another repeat command which will be the same as this one move forward place a block and again doing that three more times so move forward place let's put some spruce planks there okay that should look good also here's the code you can see it gets a little bit more complicated now and let's run that and hope that i didn't make any mistakes looks good so far doesn't it <laughs> and our multicolored house looks pretty awful i know and there we go, so we've now successfully built a house, which is amazing. I think Steve likes it as well. <laughs> Alright, so the next puzzle is number seven. And what's this one? It's a good to plant ahead. Plant crops on both sides of the water so you don't get hungry later on. Okay, we can make use of the repeat command here, that's for sure. We are going to do something six times apparently, which would be plant and then move forward so one two three four five and six that would mean that we'd be standing at the top there so we would want to then turn to the right move forward do the same thing all again that was actually not connected and uh, come back down the other side so we would need to move forward first this time and then plant the crop and then we'd be standing here at the end right I think that's it let's run this there we go nice and efficient and what's happened there I forgot to turn again didn't I <laughs> I made a big mistake also um, I think I think I missed out something else as well don't we need to move forward twice there I think he's gonna walk into the water I wonder what happens if we do that yeah look <laughs> we've drowned we have successfully drowned I'm not a good programmer Let's put in a uh, an extra move forward command, and then we should be good. All right, now let's run this. So down goes all of the wheat. And then we successfully navigate over to the other side, and all of the wheat is growing very fast as well. And we've done it. We've grown all of our crops. Don't jump up and down. That'll break the crops. What are you doing? <laughs> all right, on to puzzle number eight. We're getting halfway there. Now things are going to get a little bit trickier. And you can see here that we have to basically make our way to our home. So I want to see what way we're facing here. It looks like we're going to have to turn to our left. And then we're going to one, two, three. We're going to repeat moving forward three times. Then we would turn to our right. Move forward. Turn to our left. <laughs> move forward. Turn to our right again. Um... Wait a minute, so when we get to here, we've moved forward three times, we're turning right, move forward, left, move forward, right, move forward, left, move forward. So we can actually put that all in a, um, a little thing like this. So we would go right then left and just remove that. Yes, delete it please. Um, let's have a look at the code again. Pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Simple to understand. It's even more simple to understand when you've got um, this right here to look at because then it allows you to see what's going on with each line a little clearer. Anyway, um, let's try this then. So we go right, forward, left, forward, right, forward, left, forward. Excellent. Good use of the repeat command at the end there. I almost didn't use that, but there you go. That's puzzle eight done. And now we're on to number nine. You'll find the most valuable resource underground, but it can get dark. Place at least two torches and mine at least two coal. Okay, so what's going to be the quickest way for us to do this? I think it's going to be turning to our left. And then we need to run this two times, which will be destroy the block in front of you. Then place a torch and then move forwards and do the same thing over again. So what does that look like? That's it right there. 
Good stuff. Let's run this. Bam, we get a piece of coal, we put down a torch. And bam, there goes the second torch. Awesome stuff. <laughs> Alright. That was good. On to puzzle number 10. Walking into molten lava is a bad idea. Place cobblestone to create a bridge, then mine at least the two blocks. Mine at least two blocks of the iron. So we could mine more if we wanted to. Although, notice over here it says workspace. So far we've done all of them with the correct amount. So I imagine that might get a little bit trickier. Anyway, if we move forward and place cobblestone ahead. Then we need to move forward again onto the cobblestone. Do that twice. And I'm wondering now, can we squeeze this into our little thing? I think what we've got to do is put that move forward. If we could separate those inside there. So the first time that we move forward, or technically the second time, it's actually the first part of our repeat. So then we'll be in front of the iron, we'll destroy the block in front of us, and then we'll do it again, and that way we'll get our two pieces of iron, right? So here's what it looks like with code. <laughs> and now let's go and run that command. Good stuff. There we go. And we did it. I like. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. Puzzle 11 of 14. Lava is hiding beneath some of these blocks, which you'll need to cover up before moving forward. An if command will come in handy here. Add a move forward command in the correct place to mine these blocks. Okay, so do we get one or two? If, yeah, we've got an if statement here. So one new type of command. It's already given us an example. So when run, repeat seven times. Destroy block if lava ahead place cobblestone. Is, is it literally giving us the solution there? What else do we have to do? Let's run that and see if that's the solution. So yeah, there was lava ahead, so it placed down the cobblestone. Ah, but look, there's something missing here. We need to just add a move forward. So we'll put that one right there. Also, let's look at the code because we've now got an if statement and here it is. So if lava ahead function, then it opens up a bracket between there and there I think and it says place cobblestone ahead now this bit right here is sort of like one of those isn't it except it's inside the if statement very cool stuff right let's run this and there we go <laughs> oh I did it the wrong way around didn't I we've got to place the block down first oh that was silly okay so we'll move that one back there we'll put that one behind it and we'll reset and run again not off to a good start walking into lava uh, but here you can see there's not always lava, but if there is, if, if there is, it's going to place cobblestone ahead. Great stuff. Alright, and we get some iron too. There we go, and that's the, the whole program executed or run or finished or whatever. Right, on to puzzle number 12. Now things are getting tricky. Mine free redstone, but don't fail, or sorry, don't fall in the lava, which would be a fail. Use an if command to place cobblestone over any lava you encounter. Okay, so let's say we repeat something three times here. So one, two, and three. What we're gonna do is move forward twice. Then we would destroy the block in front of us, but if there were lava underneath it, we would place cobblestone there, or possibly something like wool, which is flammable. <laughs> and then we would turn to our left and start over again. So we've done that with one less than it's recommended, which makes me wonder if I missed something. Um, did we destroy the block? We did. And if there's lava, we place ahead. Don't we need to then move forward again? Yes, I think we do. We put a move forward there. We're now 9 out of 9, and here's what the code looks like. Good stuff. Alright, let's run this. So we break the block, we fill it in, and yes, we move forward. Good thing I checked that, otherwise we might have been in a tricky situation. And there it goes. Yay, we did it. <laughs> cool. All right, so on to the next one. Puzzle 13 of 14. Great job. You've gathered lots of resources and built a modest home. Now lay rail in front of the edge. Uh, now lay... <laughs> now lay rail from the edge of the map to the door of your house. Okay, we can do just that. Um, so what are we going to do? First of all, we'll probably turn to our right. So we're going in a straight line. Just thinking though, when we get to the end we need to turn right again. So we could put that inside a repeat command. So we would do that twice. 
Yep, and then this is the same distance. So we're going to place a rail. Then we're going to move forward. And then we're going to repeat that six times, aren't we? Right, I think we can put that there and that there. And that might be sort of correct. And if it is, that's what it looks like. So you can have one of these repeats inside another one. And that's three commands left. I, uh, less. I've obviously missed something here, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm not sure what it would be, though. No, that seems to be pretty good. Have we done it with less than they recommended? We have! Excellent! Very efficient. <laughs> and Steve is riding on his minecart. Awesome. Off you go, Steve. Off you go. So we've now reached the uh, end of the game, as the 14th level is basically just an open... Do what you want. So right here you can see we've got all the commands we saw in the game. And do you know what? I think we should make a little program where we make use of all of them. So what we're going to do is move forward a bunch of times. Now we could use a repeat, but I am being lazy. And I just want to run this and see. Look, the, the map here is bigger than you see. And I've drowned. Oh dear. Um, oh dear indeed. What type of blocks can we place down? Can we place down... We can place down farmland. Okay, so I want to make a little program that uses every command right here. Okay, so here's my code so far. It's probably not too efficient. I haven't really set Steve to do anything in an efficient way. It's just a case of uh, going to each of the trees one by one, destroying a few things, and then we're going to plant some crops. So we haven't used every command just yet. It just occurred to me that if I make a minor mistake in one place, then it's going to sort of unravel the rest of everything else. So here we go. Punching down the first tree. Going to go down below. Turn to our side. Let's have a look at the code as it goes as well. I'm going to turn around. So I use that one inside a repeat since we did it twice. And this time we're moving forward and destroying blocks because there were two in the path um, that we wanted to destroy. And then we're going to pick up that. We're going to place down farmland. And it doesn't let us place crops on top of it which is interesting kind of makes sense because the only time we've been able to do that before is just with um, yeah the, the, the farmland or whatever already at the floor level which I don't know how to do unless we place farmland down here we could place it in the lava or just the water it doesn't have to be the lava okay and we wanted to do everything here so what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll make him plant some of that in the water then then we'll put crops on it and then we'll go down to the bottom here and we'll shear the sheep. Okay, Steve is punching down the trees. Bam. <laughs> and now he's mining the blocks in front of him as he makes his way up. And I set this to repeat a few more times, so we should walk up a little bit higher. And then we're going to be on that block. We're going to place a sandstone there. And look at that. Okay. I think I made that the wrong way around. Did he try to plant a crop on the grass there? I think he did. Either way, we're planting crops, they're growing, and then we're going to end up somewhere down here, and then we're going to shear the sheep. So we will be right. Now I need to take a screenshot of that, because we can't see that bit when I'm writing the code, but I want to walk along here and shear a couple of the sheep next. So it kind of occurred to me there that that's pretty much the only thing we had left to do, was shear the sheep and then place down a torch. You can see here, added a few extra lines to do that. And I got it wrong as well, but... You know, one extra move forwards and we would have had it there. <laughs> uh, but there you go. What an awesome little game this is. Also, let's have a look at our code. You can see all of this right here does everything that you just saw. I'm going to click on finish. I don't know what happens actually when you click on that. Oh, you get like a little code thing. Oh, so you can go back and play your game again and again. Well, I'm going to put that on my clipboard because I might want to come back here and add some more to this. So I guess you could set yourself a little challenge perhaps. Um, you want to mine every single block up the top here, all the diamonds and emeralds and chop down all the trees, shear all the sheep and make yourself a little bit of a farm. I don't know, it's up to you what you want to do with this and I do believe the website has tons more little coding mini games as well, not ones to do in Minecraft but other games as well so if you're interested in any of that then of course um, you know, go check out the website, there'll be a link to all of this down below in the description box. If you're interested in programming or just having a go with this, uh, then be sure to check it out. Anyway, that's it from me this video. If you've enjoyed it, leave a like. Uh, but that's it, so thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.